All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Onyx ball python. The Onyx actually consists of two genes, the black pastel and the hat red azanthic. As a matter of fact, if you actually went to a reptile show and you started asking around, hey, what are the two genes in the Onyx ball python? A lot of people probably wouldn't know because it's not that common of a combination. And if, as a matter of fact, it's actually a pretty dark combination. And if you actually work other dark genes into the Onyx, you get some really super impressive dark snakes. And if you actually work some lighter genes into it, you get some really unexpected results. Sometimes they can really kind of, you know, kind of scratching your head is like, are these the right genes in the Onyx when I'm working some of these really bright genes into it? Make some really unexpected combos. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the potential of the Onyx Ball Python. All right, so I'm gonna jump back and forth between the world of ball pythons and morph market. And I wanna start with the black pastel ball python. This is what a black pastel looks like. This is one component of the onyx. And the black pastel is also a dark morph. It's, it's kind of interesting if you actually breed two black pastels together, you get a super black pastel, which is a completely patternless, almost jet black snake, probably the blackest snake that you can actually get in ball pythons. And here is another component of of the onyx and that is the het red exanthic and the het red exanthic almost looks like a normal ball python but essentially if you actually look, take a close look at this it actually has a clear back almost like a black back on the back of the het red exanthic and a lot of people you kind of confuse the het red exanthic with recessive genes because normally when we're talking about recessives we're always talking about you know like the het albino or het clown or het tristripe all the recessives then in this case we're actually seeing het red or het red azanthic when it's actually a co-dominant gene and remember the difference between the co-dominant and the recessive is you can actually see one copy of a co-dominant gene so in this case you can actually see this is the het red with one copy of the red azanthic called the het red <laughs> you can actually see one copy of the gene so it's not a recessive mutation so if you actually take the the het red and you cross it with a black pass this is what you get. Take a look at this. This is the onyx. Pretty amazing snake. It's really a, really a dark morph just by itself. Really impressive. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are asking me, hey, you're doing these morph reviews. Can you show me the prices to see if I can actually afford these snakes? I know some of these snakes over here are like thousands of dollars. And if you actually take a look at this price on this one, this actually sold in 2019 for $400. So not too bad, not out of the price range of a lot of people you know it's it's actually within reason the het red azanthic and the black pastel so what I want to show you is I want to show you mixing other genes into the onyx so you can really see the ultimate potential of what these two genes can do. And I want to start with the pastel. The pastel is actually a codominant mutation. You breed two pastels together, you get a super pastel. And essentially what the pastel is, is it's a bright yellow snake. And a lot of times you'll actually see a lot of variation between the different pastels. Some of them are really bright and some of them are kind of browned out right out of the chute. And usually as they age they also tend to fade as they get a little bit older unless you mix them with the right genes and the pastels you usually reduce the patterns quite a bit in a lot of combos and here's what happens if you mix pastel in with the onyx take a look at this crazy snake it is a completely unexpected combo as far as what you would actually expect it really completely shatters the top of the snake and really breaks it up as a matter of fact if you actually take two copies of the pastel the super pastel and work it into the onyx take a look at this snake this is even more kind of really unexpected working the super pastel into the onyx essentially what you get is you get almost like a silver snake with just a few little freckles all along the snake makes for a really impressive combination. So here is the butter. You mix butter into the onyx. You also get kind of an unexpected result. The butter, a lot of people think it's the same thing as the lesser. As a matter of fact, I've seen quite a few comments under some of my videos and they're like, hey, can you explain the difference between butter and lesser? And it's kind of, you know, it really depends on who you talk to. Some people say the butter and lesser are exactly the same genes, just kind of different lines of the same genes. And some people say there's actually significant differences where in a lot of cases, 
cases, maybe the, a lot of people say the butter is a little bit brighter than the lesser, although I've seen a lot of lessers that look exactly like this butter. And actually the butter and the lesser are both in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So you breed two butters together and you actually get an all-white snake with bright blue eyes. Pretty amazing morph. As a matter of fact, if you actually take a butter and work it into the onyx, take a look at this crazy snake. This is the butter onyx, which is the butter, black pastel, het, red, azanthic. There's actually three genes. As a matter of fact, this is over on uh, World of Ball Pythons because some of these I actually couldn't find over on Morph Market. There's just a handful of onyx combos. And I kind of was digging around, <laughs> kind of searching all over the internet, trying to figure out where I could actually find some pictures of these combos. And this is kind of unexpected. Usually when you're working other genes into the butter or the lesser, in a lot of cases you'll actually get a really strong pattern from the butter or the lesser. And a lot of times you'll get really high contrast in the snakes. So I'd say this is a really pretty visually dominant combination when it comes to onyx and onyx combos. So here is the super stripe. The super stripe is kind of interesting because it's actually an allelic combination. So this is actually the yellow belly and the specter in one snake. And it's, it's, I'd say when it comes to some of the allelic combinations, like, you know, you're looking at the super stripe or the puma or the highways and the freeways, a lot of times those actually hold their prices a lot higher than a lot of your other two gene combinations just because they're pretty difficult to hit. So if you actually took a super stripe, and you breed it to like a normal ball python, half the offspring come out as yellow belly, half come out as specter. So you really can't reproduce the super stripe unless you actually breed it to either a yellow belly or a specter or something else with the super stripe in the mix. It gets a little bit complicated. So here's what happens if you take the super stripe and you breed it into the onyx. Take a look at this. This is the onyx super stripe. Pretty amazing combo. And such what it does is it kind of washes out all the color of the super stripe and you get this really interesting almost like a metallic looking snake and they essentially they call it the super stripe because you have a really strong stripe right down the top of the snake that's where it gets its name super stripe so here is the GHI. The GHI is actually a dark morph, one of the true dark morphs. You mix GHI with almost anything and you end up with a darker background as far as the background color of the overall color and pattern of the snake. If you actually mix GHI in with the onyx, take a look at this. This is a really impressive combo. As a matter of fact, the, the first thing that I thought of when I saw this snake, it is the GHI Mojave. If you've ever seen the GHI Mojave, it looks almost exactly like this. But if you actually take a look at this, it has a really super, almost a jet black background. It is pretty amazing. I don't think I've ever seen a GHI Mojave as dark of a background as this crazy snake. This looks pretty awesome. I'd say this is probably one level above your GHI Mojave, except the GHI Mojave is a two gene combo, and this is actually a three gene combo. So it'd be a little bit harder to hit and a little bit harder to actually reproduce. And as a matter of fact, I was looking at the prices on some of this. This one is $500, so not too bad for a three gene combo. Maybe a little bit higher up, you know, as far as, you know, some of your kind of lower end three gene combos. If you're looking at like, you know, uh, like your Lemon Blast, Fire, or something like that, you know, that's probably a lot cheaper than something like this. I think it comes down to really the, 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 the probably, I would say it really comes down to how popular a lot of these genes are sometimes you know you actually get some of these genes that you they kind of bring a higher price for whatever reason they're just not as popular and you actually make some really awesome combos and they can bring higher prices just because they're not as wide stream and mass produced as some of your some of your other genes it's kind of interesting the whole ball python pricing scheme it's kind of interesting so here is the yellow belly, and I, I kind of considered the yellow belly kind of a sleeper morph when it comes to ball pythons. Just as a standalone morph, I'd say it's not really that impressive. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between a yellow belly and a normal unless you're really picking out some of the fine details of the yellow belly. As a matter of fact, there are some markers on the yellow belly, and I, I can actually show you some here on this snake. So usually if they have the flames coming up the side, you can see kind of the little flames 
coming up the sides almost you can almost see them on this day that is usually a sure sign of yellow belly and then if you actually take a look at the belly you see right on the edge of the belly usually they have kind of a kind of a really busy pattern running up along the belly and if you're actually looking at the belly the color of the belly a lot of times the yellow belly doesn't have a yellow belly sometimes it'll have a kind of a white belly so you always can't tell by the color of the belly and sometimes it actually has kind of a faded out head on top of the yellow belly but you know as it's as a standalone morph it doesn't really look that impressive but if you actually mix it in with other combos you actually get some really dramatic impressive results with a lot of yellow belly combos and here's what happens if you work yellow belly into the onyx take a look at this combo. And i'd say this is probably my favorite onyx combo adding just yellow belly is pretty amazing it really brings out like this coppery color completely changes it from that almost a xanthic looking snake and really kind of jumbles up the pattern and i like the the stripe right on top kind of a broken up kind of a jagged line right on top of the snake pretty amazing as a matter of fact i was looking at the price on this one this one is eight hundred dollars now the other thing about this one though is the other thing you notice as far as pricing on ball pythons this one was actually born in 2010 and let's see it actually was just last renewed in 2019 so you're looking at like a nine-year-old ball python that is a female so a lot of times the adult females can sell sometimes for twice or even three times as much as some of your hatchlings just because they're you know a lot of times they're like ready to breed right out of the chute and a lot of people are looking at something like this as a potential breeder and kind of a return on investment and they can kind of drive a higher price so here is the trick ball python. I actually haven't talked much about the trick. It's kind of an interesting gene. I was looking through some of these trick combos and I keep running across these amazing trick combos that are really just kind of really surprising. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna do probably a trick on one of my next morph reviews. And if you actually look at the trick as a standalone morph, it's, it's, it's kind of a subtle morph. Maybe just a little jumbled up pattern you can see in these alien heads has kind of some pixelation and kind of breaks up the pattern a little bit but here's what happens if you mix trick into the onyx take a look at this snake this is pretty amazing how it just really shatters the pattern on the onyx really i can't even believe that it makes this much of a difference in some of the combos As a matter of fact a lot of the trick combos that i've kind of had my eye on are a lot of the pinstripe combos and like the lemon blast combos with the pastel and the pinstripe mixed with the trick makes for some pretty amazing combos. So here is the mahogany. The mahogany is also another dark morph, works really well with the onyx. As a matter of fact, if you breed two mahoganies together, you get the super mahogany, which is called the suma. Pretty awesome. Some people are actually making suma pies, trying to have a, a kind of a replacement for the panda pied using the super mahogany instead of the super black pastel to kind of get away from some of the genetic defects of the super black pastel with some of the kinking in the spines and some of the duck bills that they can you know kind of randomly have i think it's a lot of these genetic anomalies are kind of really small genetic defects as far as the numbers and a lot of people they'll hit something bad like that or you know kind of with the spiders a lot of people look at you know maybe a severe head wobble on a spider and they just kind of kind of stay away from the morph altogether and a lot of people actually try to find replacements for some of these genetic anomalies and i think that's what a lot of people are doing with the suma and replacing the the super black pastel. So here's what happens if you mix mahogany in with the onyx. Take a look at this thing. This is pretty amazing. I say this is probably the darkest one that we have seen out of all these onyx combos. Looks really impressive. And I was kind of wondering, it almost looks like it has kind of a blue tint to it. I wasn't sure if that was actually, you know, kind of the exposure of the picture, but if you actually look, you know, kind of at some of the coconut husk in the background, it almost looks like that is really the color of the snake like a deep bluish black on this one pretty amazing combo has kind of that you know the regular line right down the top that you see on a lot of these combos and the really scrambled out pattern on the side pretty amazing 
So this is the albino, and when it comes to visual dominance, the albino is the king. And I, you know, when I'm doing these morph reviews and some of these combos, I'm always wondering, yeah, how visually dominant is this morph? And pretty much the ultimate test is to mix them with the albinos, because a lot of times the albino will completely mask all the other genes. As a matter of fact, if you can actually find something that's more visually dominant than the albino, a lot of times you almost run into the problem where it, there's almost nothing that you can mix with it to make some really impressive combos just because it's so visually dominant. Kind of like the albino. <laughs> you mix anything with albino and you end up with an albino looking snake. So I always like to kind of test these genes for visual dominance against the albino. So here's what happens if you mix albino in with with the onyx and take a look at this essentially you get kind of an albino looking snake the albino is more visually dominant than the onyx which is the black pastel and the head red exactly the kind of the interesting thing about this is if you actually take albino and work in black pastel I've seen a lot of these combos where essentially the black pastel will really reduce the amount of yellow in the albino so sometimes you'll get a really high white albino and in this case, you actually see the yellows kind of faded out on this one, and I couldn't tell if that was actually an influence from the het red azanthic, or maybe you just have a low contrast albino. Sometimes you can have really high contrast albinos where the, the yellow is super bright and there's a high contrast between the yellows and the whites, and sometimes with certain lines of albinos, you can just kind of have, you know, the, kind of like this where it has a low contrast. So I wasn't sure if it was actually, you know, a low contrast albino, or it was just kind of faded out from from the hat red. So this is the last one I want to show you. This one will kind of blow you away. This is pretty amazing. This is actually the Yellow Belly Pastel, and it's probably one of the brightest combos you can get with some of the most common genes, the Yellow Belly and the Pastel. As a matter of fact, if you're looking for really bright, super bright yellow snakes, you can mix like Yellow Belly, Pastel, and Orange Dream, and Fire, and mix all those genes together. You get really super bright, super clean snakes. And you know, kind of the other interesting thing is, I've seen a lot of these yellow belly pastels and I'm surprised no one's given them a common name like a you know like a firefly or a dragonfly or something like that it's just the yellow belly pastel as far as I know there's really no common name and kind of the interesting thing is check this out when you actually mix yellow belly pastel with the onyx look at this crazy combo and it's just so unpredictable as far as what you could actually think you would produce when actually mixing really bright jeans in with a really dark combination like the onyx and it's kind of interesting i've seen a lot of these almost like easter eggs over here in morph market where you're working all these genes together and you're breeding your onyx to a yellow belly pastel and then you pop out something like this and you start scratching your head thinking wait a minute is that something that is that i just produced with these four genes or is there something else in the mix in the background and really probably the key to a lot of these is there's a lot of snakes that have already been produced over here on Morph Market and the world of ball pythons. So if you actually make something that's unpredictable, you can actually come over here and go, oh yeah, someone already produced that and those are the genes that I have in this combination. Versus if you're like breaking new ground and just breeding these together and you pop out something like this and you have no clue and you know, you look at something like this and it's a patternless, freckly snake and it's, it's almost um, it's kind of mind-boggling that those four genes come together to produce an amazing snake like this. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Pablo Martinez asks, how come YouTube keeps unsubscribing me from your channel? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of the latest glitches over here on YouTube where they're just randomly unsubscribing people from a whole variety of channels. As a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of people in every single video, they're like, hey, just letting everyone know that people are being unsubscribed. Just check below this video to see if you're still subscribed to this channel. And usually I don't really push subscribers. You actually don't get paid for being subscribed to any 
any channel or actually subscribing or having so many subscribers. It's almost like, you know, it's almost like bragging rights that I have a million subscribers, but you actually get paid over here on YouTube for the views. So if you have a really good channel, a lot of people are watching it and, you know, the subscribers just naturally come. You don't really have to kind of, you know, ask people to subscribe every single video. I've seen people just almost begging people to subscribe and it's kind of interesting. You watch those channels and, you know, they're always asking for people to subscribe. They have a lot of subscribers, but you actually go over to somewhere like Social Blade and see how much money they're making and a lot of times they're not making a lot of money. They just kind of have a lot of subscribers, which is kind of weird how the whole YouTube thing works and the kind of the, the, the way the subscribers really work is if you actually subscribe to this channel, it actually puts it on your channel in your subscriber list and it's actually kind of like free advertising for my channel. So as a matter of fact, if you actually put a comment under this video and I click on your name, I can go over to kind of your profile or your channel over on YouTube and a lot of times it'll list all the channels that you're actually subscribed to and then I'll go to some of those channels. That's, as a matter of fact, that's how I find a lot of the snake and reptile channels is actually from everyone commenting on my videos and actually clicking on their name, going to their subscribers, and then going over to different channels and kind of, you know, you can actually go through all your different comments and people that are listed under your comment section. It's kind of interesting how it works. It's almost like free advertising. And I'm actually subscribed to over 600 channels here on YouTube. So if you actually go to my like channel settings and look at all the people I'm subscribed to, it's a really, really long list. It pretty, you probably won't actually get through all the list of channels that I'm actually subscribed to. And usually if I actually see a channel and someone makes a comment, I'll go over there and subscribe just to kind of help them out and kind of promote their channel. Although, you know, if you have too many subscribers, yeah, I can actually subscribe to someone's channel and they get lost in my whole list of people that I'm actually subscribed to. So a lot of times it doesn't really help you to be subscribed, but please subscribe if you haven't. I almost never say that on a video because, you know, it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.